Welcome everyone to hopefully a more interesting video. After all this Mac upgrading, it is time for some more serious SGI fun again. And yes, we will also continue with a P3 very soon. And today, in this video, we want to do two things. First of all, as I said in an earlier video, I had a second spare system board before I got the second octane. And this is this one. And by the way, why is there an EEPROM? What was there? Empty socket. Hmm. I think it was working though. Anyway, by the way, it's the same botch wires on all of the boards. And the reason I took this out, this was with the other vintage stuff stored in my parents' attic. And the reason I took this out is mostly because someone asked me on YouTube and Twitter. So he's working on some FPGA. SGI system emulation or uh, recreation stuff and he wanted to reuse the original CPU module and he asked me whether I can measure some voltages and resistors and such and obviously I do not want to do this on my more fancy boards and this is the least powerful one the spare one here this has only a single CPU module I think single 195 megahertz and as I also said in another video I brought this memory already earlier this year. So I need to get back some memory into this. Then later or another day we will for the first time ever unscrew the CPU module here and potentially solder some probe measurement wires there on the back of this module which is by the way here this area. So and I also got a tip regarding the hardware cursor that I was implementing for the X driver. I can change the position, but not yet the cursor shape. So I will probably also take a quick look if I can quickly hex this into finally have a fully working hardware cursor. But to get this working, so first we need to get the system board out here. Get some memory from that. So first we need to get this system board out. I will probably also have to switch the hard drive because I want to use this less upgraded system for the soldering later. And I have the Linux hard drive in the other system with the higher performance graphic board and the higher performance system board. Some shuffling around just for this test. And you can see this is CPU module is way larger. This is dual 195 MHz, this is single 195 MHz, I think. And we need two memory modules that I just installed earlier this year. This should be 256 MB. And yeah, actually the botch wires have another color. This is red, brownish, or maybe this, this is red and this is black or so, interestingly. And which revision is this? This is 005, there is revision A, 006 revision A, this is 005 revision B. Hmm, interesting. So this means this is slightly newer. Hmm. The more you know, by the way, this is some power delivery there. This pins, I guess, here and here. Because here you see this, there's a, here's a CPU module plugs in, the longer one. So let's plug this back in and hope that it still works after a decade in the attic with this fragile compression connectors. Hmm, should I, by the way, probably I should have investigated these connectors more before I plugged it in. They look relatively finish though. Of course, slightly late to look at it after plugging it in. And with changing the boards, I guess the NVRAM is most likely stored on the system board, so I probably have to reset the Linux booting and VRAM stuff. As right now, or whatever I had there. Hmm. 
Hmm. Switched on immediately. Uh, auto finger is plugged in. But despite the spontaneous boot, it still works. The system board. So, cannot open keyboard for input. Probably see what the reset is doing. In the meantime, we can get the other hard drive. So that's probably putting Ericsson already. But today we don't want Eric, so we switch off, which works by just pressing the power button, I think. So that was the RX installation. Here comes the Linux installation. I probably on this one also will solder here some LEDs into the light bar. They are burnt out. I think this should probably be safe to remove by running, I guess. These are unfortunately regular light bulbs that burn through. So I think two of the three are burned through here, so I probably eventually I want to open this and solder LEDs in. And apparently I also remembered slightly wrong, this is not 195, that's even 200 megahertz. So not as bad. This is a for personal video board and the simple graphics. And we have to change this load partition stuff here to load Linux because this is the setup to load IRIX. So let me quickly type that in. So let's see how many typos I made with load partition. XIO, zero PCI. 15 SCSI 0, disk 1, R disk 0, partition 1, XFS, OS load file name IP30, let's see. I guess that looks good. And if you guys share, like and subscribe enough, I eventually will also will invest in a video grabber for VGA, DVI and such. Hmm. Maybe non-SMP doesn't boot because I have not tried non-SMP in a decade bugs and regression but in this case my own bugs and regressions This one has a more functional light bar. Or maybe I pressed something. I know this is also set up for IRIX Y. Maybe in VRAM is empty something. Then let's type this in again. As it fails, I probably mistyped something there. Oh, it's load power. There's a T missing. So let's type everything again. So that looks better. Oh, I pressed record too slow. Let's hope that it does not hang like the other board. Yeah, that continues probably most likely SMP related, I would assume. So I have the newer system root here in slash new. So I bind mount all the proxies dev dev pts and change root in there. And as far as I remember, X was configured to start here, I guess. 
on the last YouTube video, I hope. Do we have Ethernet? Maybe we don't have networks that this X dirt is so slow. Yep, wired Ethernet networks much better with, with the wire plugged in. So and what we wanted to do today is this is already a hardware cursor and I have done this earlier this year. However, when I implemented this, I simply guessed because on this graphic board is a VC3, the video controller 3, and the previous SGA machines had a video controller 2, VC2, and I just guessed that the register locations were the same and they were. However, what was not the same was some side port or so SRAM access for the cursor memory. So you really can't change the cursor shape and this is just what the boot prom, the ARCS firmware had loaded there. So when we go here to some corner to resize this, we, we do not have the precise location and oops, and yeah, that is exactly the problem that we do not see where we are clicking. You see this is some pixels off and also this, in my opinion, not the most awesome color. And for obvious usability reasons, we would want to eventually be able to change the shape and color. And that's what I wanted to try now. The problem is when I record everything, usually the videos become too long. So, and I have the feeling people get bored and don't like long videos with boring trial and error. So I will tinker around a little bit and tune in as soon as I have something working and code changes to show. And we have some cursor changing. I switched here to... My setup is as following. Um, is there something top secret? So the setup is as following. So here's SSH to the data center where I have my cross compiled T2 setup. And I added here the stuff like cursor. And what I've done for tonight is clobbered here together with trial and error. Some things I was fiddling around. Here's some cursor SRAM address. This appears to be some one double word side port thing for this video controller 3. This is also as my initially cursor position here. So it is somewhere, somewhere here, set cursor position. So this is identical to the video controller 2 of SGI and the new port that already had in driver. And this cursor side port thing appears to be slightly changed. So we were also guessing around there for now. Here I have another Dell display. And the reason is that I have this on my desk next to the other one for my other work. And um, no fake here, this is, uh, don't even have the keyboard on this side, SGI keyboard, but that doesn't mean a thing. What means more a thing is here cat CPU info, so that is our lovely octane. So what we have new is that this cursor is indeed changing. Um, so now we can actually know where we click on and I have not yet changed the colors. Next I need to fiddle around with the colors but, but someone is waiting for me for dinner and, and tomorrow my attention will be focused on some OC Arcade details. So the cursor is changing and um, X cursor, arrow cursor, I beam or what it was called in Xorg and yeah pretty amazing. And another day we need to tinker around with the color map and then we will have a black cursor hopefully. So yeah and I also requested commit access to the impact driver as probably nobody else will do something with it. So here is XORG mailing list. Next we will push this to GitHub and this is exactly why I do all these YouTube videos. It will not all be reviewing vintage hardware it will also be more live open source work so if you want to support this share like and subscribe and if you want to see more real-time hacking on trial and error and looking on assembly dumps and such then let me know however i have a feeling that will be 
partially mostly boring so my personal impression so far is summaries of this will be more interesting and yeah that's the code not super interesting hours are mostly spent finding out those magic values and finding out where to write them i know some youtubers live stream eight hours of such kind of trial and error work again let me know in the comments below if eight hour live stream of bit fiddling on the octane will be interesting for you and also share like and subscribe to let others know about this vintage programming stuff because otherwise i have no means of funding this see you soon for probably the color map and also disassembling and measuring around on the cpu module for the other gentleman who wanting to use this for his fpga sgi re-implementation work so here again we could probably quit this here exit and yeah here we have the sgi prompt again nothing fake there and here it's a secure shell to copy stuff to the speed racer and now we shut it down for the next video to come